This Bible study is going to be called, It's Not the Jews. The Jewish Jesuit Pope Vatican Connection. And no, I have not lost my mind. Turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. That'll be our starting verse. Actually, Revelation 2 and chapter 2 and verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write. Well, this is Jesus speaking. This is not Bob speaking. These things saith the first and the last. And that's Christ. Which was dead and is alive. Christ was crucified and died on the cross and three days later rose from the dead, right? Verse 9. Listen carefully. This is a verse you'll never hear in John Hagee's Cornerstone Church in San Antonio, Texas. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Did you catch that? I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Yes, people, it's not the Jews. It's the synagogue of Satan. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 8. All right, John chapter 8, verse 42. Here's another verse you'll... This is another chapter, the words of Jesus. This chapter will would never be read in over 90-something percent of all the 501c3 businesses with the name church in the name. I don't care if it says Grace Baptist Church. They're a 501 IRS approved, uh, IRS section code uh, 501c3, a tax exempt corporation, a business masquerading as a church. They would never read this. I went to church for many years and they never read this chapter. It's as if these words of Jesus do not exist. Why? Because who do they serve? Well, let's read. All right, John chapter 8, verse 42. Jesus said unto them, Who's them? You're going to find out in a minute. If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and come from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you... Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Listen carefully. This is Jesus speaking. You ever hear that, what would Jesus do, WWJD? Well, how about what did Jesus do? Not what would, what would Jesus do, but what did Jesus do? Verse 44, Jesus speaking to a group of people. Ye are of your father, the devil. Wow. Ye are of your father, the devil? And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, when Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do, basically I think you've got three choices. Either one, Jesus is using a figure of speech, for example, you ever heard it said, you know, a bunch of guys standing around and a beautiful woman walks by and they go, wow, that woman's a fox. Well, you know, she doesn't have four legs with a tail, you know, figure of speech, right? 
or my boss is a pig. No, I'm not talking about my boss now, but, you know, some people, you know, I've heard women say that, oh, my boss is a pig. Or women will say, oh, that man, he's a he's a dog, you know, because he likes to sleep around with whoever he can. Obviously, he doesn't have four legs and barks. So, when Jesus said, you're up your father, the devil, was he using a figure of speech? Okay. Was he calling them names? Nah, 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 nah. You're, you're up your father, the devil. Is that what Jesus was doing? So, was it a figure of speech? Is he calling them names? Or is he telling the truth? Well, let's read the next verse. Verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. What? Ye are of your father the devil? Verse 45, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not? Jesus says, I'm not using a figure of speech here. I'm not calling you names. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Verse 46, which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Wow. Now who's Jesus talking to? Verse 48. Then answered the Jews. What? What? Ye are of your father the devil? Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? See, they're, they're, they're saying, Oh, you're a demon-possessed Samaritan. You have a devil. They're accusing Jesus of being demon-possessed. Hmm. Then answered the Jews. It's pretty obvious who Jesus is talking to here, isn't it? But, you know, not all of them. Verse 49, Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. He shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was... I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So, how can this be? How can they be? How can these Jews be Abraham's children and yet be the children of the devil? Simple. Judah married a Canaanite woman. Well, the answer to that is 1 Chronicles 2 and verse 3. The sons of Judah. Judah, one of the twelve tribes of Israel. The sons of Judah, Er and Onan and Shelah. 
which three were born unto him of the daughter of Shua, the Canaanitess. And Er, the firstborn of Judah, was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he slew him. Did you know that God didn't like Judah's son, Er, and killed him? And he didn't like Onan either, and he killed him too. God killed two of Judah's sons, which he had with Shua, the Canaanitess. And if you don't know about the Canaanites being fathered by the devils, well, I suggest you read, well, listen to my many, well, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 hour study playlist on the sons of God. Genesis 6. Now, God didn't kill Shelah. Okay? He was of the satanic seed line. And he could call himself a Jew because he's of the tribe of Judah. But Jesus said, ye are of your father the devil. But that's not all. They're not all like that. Let's back up a little bit. Oh, let's see. Let's go to John 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So there were Jews that believed in Jesus. And he says, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Now, there's a bunch of lies going around that it was the Catholic Church that had Jesus killed. Well, I did a Bible study on who killed Jesus. An hour. nothing, Virtually nothing but Bible scriptures. I mean, it's obvious who killed Jesus. The Catholic Church didn't even exist. And then they'll say, well, you know, the Catholic Church didn't exist, but it was a continuation of Rome. Well, you know, the thing was, Pilate tried to release Jesus three times. He was Rome's governor for the, the province. He was the one that oversaw the trial. Pilate didn't, did, Pilate didn't want to kill Jesus. Want proof? Let's take a look real quick. Turn to Mark chapter 15 and verse 9. But Pilate answered them. Who's them? The Jews. The chief priests. Saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him, Jesus. For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. But Pilate answered and said unto them again, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried the more exceedingly, Crucify him! Does that sound like the Roman Catholic Church? Uh, no, it sure doesn't. Hmm. Turn to Matthew 27, verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders, these are not Roman Catholic priests, Matthew 27, 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Hmm. Then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. These are not Catholic priests. Saying, I have sinned 
in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. You know, what do we care? And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priests took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. Here it is, the Jews, the chief priests, not the Roman Catholics, the Jews, they're betraying an innocent man and going to put him to death. And they're worried about putting silver that they used as a bribe to, to, to have somebody betray somebody. They're, they're saying, oh, it's not lawful to put blood money back into the treasury of the temple. Oh, that'll defile the temple. But it's okay to murder an innocent man, right? Yeah, this is the thinking of these synagogue of Satan. It's not the Jews. It's the synagogue of Satan. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. And therefore the field was called the field of blood unto this day. And then you can keep reading. Oh, let's see. All right, skip, skip down to verse 20. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas! Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. This is not the Roman Catholics, people. This is not Rome. You want another witness? Let's take a look. King James Bible, John 5 and verse 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Skip to verse 18. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. John 7, verse 1. After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Huh. Okay, you want another witness? Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus. Even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Yes, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles. I'm sorry, but his name is Christ Jesus, not Yeshua. At least that's what my Bible says. 1 Corinthians 16.22, the Bible declares, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, which means cursed. 
If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Do the Jews love Jesus Christ? Are they cursed? Now, let's look at the connection, the, the Jesuit Rome, Vatican, Pope, Catholic connection. Okay, there are those that want you to think that it was the Roman Catholic Church that didn't even exist that killed Jesus and is carrying on to this day. How can that be? Well, let's take a look. All right. The Vatican is a smokescreen to lead people away from Satan's true plan. One of the things I really despise about Chick publications, Jack Chick, he blames everything on the Catholic Church. Everything. It doesn't matter. Everything I've ever read, it's always the Pope's fault. It's the Jesuits' fault. It's, you know, they're guilty of much. But the Catholic Church did not exist in the time of Jesus. I mean, he even goes so far to say that it was the, the, the Roman Catholic Church that killed Jesus. I mean, really? Uh, he must be reading a different Bible than I do. Uh, you know, what can I tell you? But let's take a look at a couple of things. Now, well, let's take a look. All right, turn to the book of Jude. Very excellent book. And Jude is a, a, a Greek rendering of the word Judah, Jew. It's, it's you know, and um, it's funny that uh, if memory serves me correctly, Jude was had a father named Joseph and a mother named Mary. Guess who he grew up with? Uh, Jesus. Yeah, well, he was a brother of the flesh, I guess you could say. But um, let's read Jude. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Listen carefully. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Bef For there are certain men crept in unawares. Yeah. They, there are certain men that creep, crept, creeped in and people, they were, people were unaware that this was happening. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. The Canaanites people, the children of the devils. Genesis 6, I have an entire playlist on this. You know, this is something that the church hides. The 501c3 satanic business that claims to be a church. Oh, let's take a look at some. But angels can't have sex, they'll tell you. Mark chapter 12, verse 25, speaking of the resurrection. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels. And they'll point out, see, see, angels can't marry. They can't have sex. They always leave off these last four words. 
but are as the angels which are in heaven. In heaven. Not all the angels are in heaven. Ooh. How about a second witness? Matthew 22, verse 30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Not all the angels are in heaven. In Revelation, it talks about the angels that were cast out of their first estate. They were cast to the earth. Yeah, not all the angels are in heaven. You want another witness? Let's take a look. Let's go back to Jude. For there are certain men, Jude 1.4, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old, condemned, ordained, ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that could apply to the Catholic Church, most certainly. Uh, you you want to go to heaven in the Catholic Church? Well, you got to, you know, do all these little rituals and believe whatever the Pope says. And don't read your Bible, believe the priests. But let's face it, Judaism is the same way. They deny, they deny the Lord Jesus Christ. How about verse 5? I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of e the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Listen carefully if you don't believe about the angels that sinned. Verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, the angels in heaven, the angels that are not in heaven, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. What's the topic here? And the angels which kept not their first estate, that's what they're talking about. That's the subject. That's the noun. And the angels which kept not their first estate. Verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. And the angels which kept not their first estate giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, hmm, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against them a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. They're talking about angels, people. Right? But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees, whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, twice dead, dead in the body, dead in the spirit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness 
of darkness forever. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. And their mouth speaking great, great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who would walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate them, separate themselves. Yeah, they separate themselves from godly people. These be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the spirit, but ye beloved, build, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, putting them, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto them that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Huh. Verse 4. For there, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. Turn to Revelation chapter 17 and verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, of whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And almost every single Bible scholar will tell you this is the Roman Catholic Church. Is it? Well, let's... Take a look what the Bible has to say. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And we're going to go into this Bible symbolism of the purple, scarlet, gold, precious stones, and pearls. We're going to go into more detail on that. I might make this a two-part study because I don't have much time today. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. Mystery Babylon the Great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Uh, who, did, who did we just read about? Uh, that killed Jesus? Uh, the Roman Catholic Church? No, the chief priests. But they weren't the Catholic priests. Who was that? Hmm. Verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, 
whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Did you catch that? And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you realize there are people whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? And if you point this out to a church, they'll say, Oh, you're a Calvinist! Oh, the whore! You're a Calvinist! Get out! In Christian love, they'll boot you out. There are people whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Well, then if you show them this and they want to argue with you, they'll say, well, you know, when you believe in Jesus, God will write your name in the book. Well, that could be true. But this is just something to make you think. But are there people whose names are written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? Mm, that's a good question. Verse 9, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And you better believe those that say that it's a Roman Catholic Church will, are quick to point out that Rome sits on seven hills, seven mountains, which is true, by the way. But so does Seattle, Washington. I've heard so does Moscow, Russia. So does Istanbul, Turkey, which is Muslim. Some people say Mecca, but I, I have not, as a fact, I don't know that Mecca is definitely on seven hills. I don't know that for a fact. But you know what they hide? Jerusalem is also seven mountains, seven hills. Isn't that interesting? Jerusalem. So Rome and Jerusalem both are on seven hills or seven mountains. So here's an interesting verse, Matthew 25, 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Luke 11.50, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. Hmm. Oh, here's a verse uh, the free will people absolutely despise and will explain away. Am I a Calvinist? No. I don't follow Calvin. I follow Jesus Christ. Christ. I don't follow Calvin. I haven't read his works very little. I, I've read so very little Calvin. I, I don't even know basically what he teaches. I just know what the Baptists claim that he teaches. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Accordingly, I'm sorry, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Huh. Very interesting. Did you know that we were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world? Isn't that wild? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, I believe in election. I mean, let's face it. When you, uh, Do you know what an election is? It's when you go to the polls and you say, am I going to vote for Hillary or am I going to vote for Trump? That's an election. You make a choice. God made a choice. And there are people who were in the, written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. 
And there are people whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. You know, that offends people. That offends people greatly. Let's go to the book of Malachi. Yeah, it's the last book in the Old, Te uh, the Old Testament, the Minor Prophets. And I know I've harped on this. I've even done a whole Bible study on this. The Malachi 1.1, 1, 1, the burden of the Lord, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and Jacob had his name changed by God to Israel. But yet Esau, Esau was Abraham's son. Well, I'm sorry, um, Isaac's son, who was, Esau was, Abraham was Esau's grandfather. When Jesus said to the Jews in John 8, chapter 8, I know ye are Abraham's seed, he was telling the truth. Esau was Abraham's seed. He was just as much an Israelite. Well, he was just as much a child of Abraham as, as Jacob, whose name was is to change it by God to Israel. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. And I hated Esau. Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. What's a man's heritage? The Bible says a man's heritage is his children. And I laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. What's the dragon? The Bible declares the dragon is the devil. Let's take a look at that real quick. Psalms 127 verse 3. The Bible, the King James Bible interprets the King James Bible. You don't need a dictionary. You don't need a concordance. Uh, the new modern Bibles destroy this. And uh, the enemy has bought up all the publishing houses. Zondervan, the largest publisher of religious books in the United States in English, uh, is owned by the children of the devil. And they're changing the Bibles. Psalms 127 verse 3, Low children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Low children are an heritage of the Lord. So, all right, so what about the dragon? Let's take a. I want to prove to you the devil is the dragon, for those of you that don't know it. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Duh! And there's people who will tell you, ow, that's, the devil is not Satan. They'll tell you that's two different beings. Well, my Bible says different. They're liars. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out unto, into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Ah. And are as the angels in heaven? Verse 20, verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Let's read that again. Malachi 1, and verse 3. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. God's going to lay waste to Esau's children for the dragons of the wilderness. Verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, 
they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. The people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Do you know what indignation means? You look it up in Webster's Dictionary. Indignation means extreme hatred. The people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. How long is forever? Uh, it's until Jesus comes and just loves everybody. Jesus just loves everybody. Well, I hate to tell you people, but the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament is the same God. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. Same God, people. Same God. So, I think I'm going to have to make this part one. Now, something you should know. According to Josephus, a Jewish historian that had some good things to write about Jesus, I don't know if he was a Christian or not, but he had respect for Jesus. He said that King Herod, you know, the, the guy that killed all the babies in Bethlehem trying to kill Jesus and when he was a baby? He said that Herod was an Edomite of Esau. And don't listen to the black Hebrews that say, oh, you white people are the children of Esau. Well, I tell you what, if Esau was white, so was his brother Jacob Israel. You know, you don't have two brothers. One's white and one's black. Uh, well... I guess you could, but there'd have to be two different eggs fertilized by two different fathers, which has happened, by the way. Believe it or not, that's happened. There was a, a German woman who gave birth to twins. One was black and one was white. They did DNA, DNA testing. One was a black U.S. soldier. The other child was a, a, a white German businessman. She was white. She was German. The, the white baby was look like a German, and the black baby look like a, a mixed African. Um, but they both had the mother's DNA. Different fathers. Doesn't happen that very often. It's been written up in the medical journals. You know, and there's some people who try to tell you that Esau and Jacob had different fathers. I, I just don't see it in the Bible. I just don't see it. You know? All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. I'm going to make this part one of the It's Not the Jews, the Jesuit Connection. And I uh, hope you'll stay with me to part two. Um, if you look in below the links in the description, I'm going to put, um, I'm not sure if I'll have it today, but I'm going to put links probably maybe on my part two I'm going to put links for an in-depth study on the angels that sinned to prove to you that there's satanic seed line on the earth, that Esau married into the satanic seed line, and who killed Jesus. I'll probably put those three links on part two. You know, these are things that the church hides today. And let me tell you people, uh, my days are numbered on the internet, uh, on YouTube. I mean, they're the elite. Hillary lost because of the internet, because of inter information, especially among the young. Uh, they found out all kinds of information about Hillary. I mean, I've known about Hillary and Bill for since the 90s. Um, I mean, you know, the, the Bushes were no better. I mean, let's face it. You know, they're all in on it. I, I don't know if I don't know if Trump's going to be any better. I just know Hillary was bad, really bad. And you know, it's it's like I, I know a vote for Hillary was basically a vote for Satan. Is Trump going to be any better? I don't know. I don't know. I do know this. Trump got 
where he is because God wanted him where he is. God sets up kings. God lays low kings. Obama was president because God wanted him there. Trump's there because he wanted him there. And um, hopefully Trump will do some things, give America one last chance to repent, because it's over, people. America is so full of sin and wickedness, it's, it's, it's about over. But I'm telling you, YouTube's going to kick me off one day, because I'm teaching the things that the wicked hate and try to hide from the church people. And right now, I, I'm, I'm just a little gnat buzzing about their face, you know? But uh, if I had a couple million listeners, they would have kicked me off a long time ago. I've only got, there's only, you know, maybe a hundred of you. So, and I'm, I think I'm going to retire and, and try to go into this full time. I'm going to, I'm checking, uh, getting a, a website that I have myself and putting up some Bible studies on it so that when YouTube does kick me off, I'll still have a presence on the internet. I'm probably going to try to find a web hosting company in Iceland that, um, by the way, Iceland kicked the bankers out of their country. They arrested them and booted them out. Yay, Iceland! If only Greece and Italy and Cyprus and the United States would do that, but don't count on it. So, the children of the devil, people. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. Um Light of the World Ministries. Uh, keep tuned. I'll uh, check, check if I get booted off uh, YouTube. Check me. You know, look for me. I'll be around. This is Light of the World Ministries. John eight twelve. Jesus said, "I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life." And if you want to know what I believe, I believe the King James Bible, and I believe the Apostles' Creed the Nicene Creed, and the Athanasian Creed. And don't fall for that lie that it was the Catholic Church that made those creeds up. No, it was the Greek Church, the church that preserved the Textus Receptus, the received text, the King James Bible uh, text for the New Testament. It was the Greek Church, Ephesus, Colossians, Galatians. All those were new Testament churches in Greece, they were the ones that preserved the Bible, not the Vatican. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.